The only way fast food companies trick me is by being too delicious so that I lead an incredibly unhealthy lifestyle and will probably die young, allegedly. Unlike today's video sponsor, which is incredibly delicious and is not gonna make you die young. <laughs> You're welcome, Magic Spoon. That's an endorsement. Guys. Guys, 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 guys. Magic Spoon. What's up? Uh, if you haven't heard me talk about Magic Spoon before, you're probably new to this channel. In that case, you're probably wondering what the f*** is going on. Bear with me one minute, we shall get to that. But first, I will say that Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, but it tastes sweet. Is it witchcraft? Yes. Allegedly. 14 grams of protein. Oh, so you can become a big muscly mofo. Not a guarantee, you have to work out and such. It's like, all those people are just like, why are you so overweight? Well, I was, e I was, I was eating the protein shakes and I just didn't get ripped. It's like, bro, you gotta work out at the same time. Do you even lift? <laughs> and four grams of net carbs in each serving and only 140 calories. Big red text, read nutritional values verbatim due to legal reasons. <laughs> You're welcome again, Magic Spoon. Nail on the head. No lawsuit from the FBI for you. Uh, what's that? Try Magic Spoon's best-selling flavors in a four-flavor variety pack featuring cocoa, fr fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. If you didn't mention that, I get the cinnamon as well. Get rid of frosted. It's too simple. I mean, it's, it's good if you like simple, if you're a small brain. And throw in some cinnamon because boy, oh boy. But what the great thing is, I got the peanut butter and the cocoa is here. Mix these together and you get that Reese's peanut butter cup glory, which is something I know. They're not very popular in the UK, but I have had them. But more up my street was Sunpat. Don't know if anyone knows this, but it was like a swirly mix of chocolate and peanut butter, like spread that you put on a toast. It's really super good, but not as good as Magic Spoon. Mm. Maybe as good as Magic Spoon because, per spoon, because I don't want to discriminate against Sunpat, which is glorious, but this isn't an advertising read for Sunpat. But if you're interested, Sunpat, I am your boy. Look at this How could you ever say no? It tastes amazing. As I said, it's too good to be true. I'll be the judge of that. Judgment made, it is. Keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash blaze, enter the promo code blaze, and you'll get $5 off any order, which is pretty glorious, to be honest. That's magicspoon.com forward slash blaze, blah, 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 all very good. Look, you guys know the score. Get yourself some Magic Spoon. So many, oh, what happens here? I haven't introduced myself. Hello there, I am Simon. What happens here is Danny writes me a script. He sends it to me over the interwebs and I print it out and then I read it and then I send that recording to Sam and he edits it into a video and then it goes out onto YouTube. <laughs> it's the circle. We should get to the point. So many hungry customers spend years of their lives trying to come up with a killer new secret system that will beat the fast food restaurant at its own game. But as wise as any soul will tell you, the best system of all has been widely known for hundreds of years and it's quite brilliantly effective, boasting a 100% success rate. Don't go to the bloody food fast food restaurant, just keep on walking. No. Yes, Danny. Yes, Danny. That's like saying, Ah oh, yes, everyone is a perfect human being, completely in control of their own impulses and decisions and desires. Next time you're walking past a KFC, tell me how that's going for you, friends. Is that the scent of fried chicken? Is that 12 secret herbs and spices and the sweat of underpaid fast food workers? Yes, it is. Let's go. As soon as you step through the threshold, you've already given away the only advantage you had. And now you're at the mercy of a madhouse menu which has been cunningly designed to favor the house. Unlike a casino, it shouldn't really be this way though. You're paying a reasonably fair price to snap up a tray of deeply unhealthy junk food prepared very quickly. You might not be expecting a rich gourmet experience or a long life, as we already mentioned, but you can with Magic Spoon. Uh, probably not a guarantee. <laughs> Don't want Magic Spoon to get that FBI lawsuit. Yeah. But at least you should have an expectation to be treated fairly as a customer. So, Danny, let me introduce you to a little thing called capitalism while being a dick. Uh, could you like 
get less stuff. Just get it. <laughs> so why do many fast food brands still allegedly feel the need to resort to deviously shifty tactics when they're entering this contract with you? I don't know, Danny. Let me again mention this thing called capitalism and a love of money. How hard is it for them to just play fair and serve up the cheap mush in the exact manner and quantities you were promised? You can almost hear Ronald McDonald's man maniacal laugh as he tosses his integrity and values into the warming bin and watches you dance like a goose on the hot grill. <laughs> I just have an image of Ronald McDonald as a, like a whipped slave master. Yeah, yeah, yeehaw! Daddy, chill. Or then again, <laughs> that old image of racist Ronald, allegedly. Or then again, maybe he's just a kindly and pure clown who just got stitched up in a flash fried kipper. I don't think they have kippers in uh, McDonald's, Danny. The size of your fries is a lie. There's been a lot of debate in recent years over the portion sizes of McDonald's small, medium, and large fries. All I know is there are two options. At least where I live in Prague, there are two options, medium and large. Medium, my wife always go for, goes for. Large, I always go for, because as we have discussed before, I am a fat f and the large ones are unquestionably larger. They come in a larger pot. If you emptied them out, they would weigh more. Definitely. Maybe this is... I don't know. Many, some have suggested the very concept of medium fries is a marketing trick. It's usually end up with roughly the same amount as you'd got with a small fries, but presented in a deceptive package, package which is designed to make the serving look more generous. I don't even think there's a small option. When you go for the like extra value meal or whatever it's called, you get medium regular size or you can upgrade it to large i don't even think there's a small option this is going to be very america centric isn't it and i'm going to bring this up all the time and people are going to be like oh simon we don't care just get to the back smacked boy this is largely a sack of flapdoodle though in fact if anything medium fries probably represent the best value for money at least in the uk oh and then we got danny as well he lives in the uk oh my god it's going to be a three country f up it's difficult to accurately assess as portion sizes are likely to vary from branch to branch. It's not completely unfeasible that an exceedingly generous and big-hearted employee in one branch might be overfilling the small fries to the point where he's giving you more than you'll find in a medium fries. So at the other end of town, by a guy who's having a really bad day. Oh my god, this is a long sentence, Danny. And sees no reason why anyone should be deriving any pleasure from it. That probably doesn't happen very often. Danny, that is like a four line sentence without even a comma son <laughs> you're torturing me that probably doesn't happen very often though partly because the first guy is likely to end up getting swiftly sacked if he doesn't curb this annoying habit of being too damn generous but in the uk the price jump from medium to large is bigger than the price jump from small to medium and yet one recent study revealed the jumping quantity of fries from medium to large is not as big as the jump from small to to medium. The Leicester Mercury reported that during their investigations, they frequently received 45% more fry. Oh my God, Leicester Mercury. This, no, <laughs> I feel like the Wall Street Journal investigates. Yeah, what happened? Well, we investigated torture in Abu Ghraib. The Leicester Mercury is like, well, we found out that the medium prize is the best deal. Bravo. Top quality reporting there, Leicester Mercury. Despite the tiny price difference, and yet when a customer pays significantly more and goes large, they get only 25% more fries in the large than in the medium. So the medium would generally appear to be the shrewdest choice on the UK menu. It's different in the US and I assume many other countries where the price jump from medium to large is much smaller than the price jump from medium, better from small to medium, better representing the difference in quantities. I don't even know. I'm not. On, I'm honestly not expensive. How, I'm sure how expensive this stuff is. I just click the large button and it t it's like it costs a certain amount of money. <laughs> Check your privilege, whistle boy. So does that mean McDonald's are definitely not shortchanging you over portion sizes? And when you're surprised and disappointed to find you're holding an empty carton much sooner than you anticipated, is it your own fault for wolfing them down too quickly like a pig? It's always your own, your own fault. Embrace it. Look, you walk through the doors of McDonald's. Everything from there, honestly, it's downhill. I mean, downhill to a place of glorious taste, but also you know, early death, allegedly. Only, uh, you know, not as if part of a balanced diet. Oh my God, the McDonald's corporation is huge. They've got like trillions of dollars, right? They, they, they could destroy me. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, I love McDonald's. I do genuinely love McDonald's. I eat there way too often, like once a month, which is way too often, allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, not according to one Reddit thread from 2017, which gathered much interest and strong support. In the thread entitled, What Did Your Job Want to Hide from Customers? Oh my god, I even think I saw that thread. 
Uh, one McDonald's anonymous ex-McDonald's employee uh, from an unspecified location spilled the beans on the pinching trick. She alleged that newbies at her branch were taught from day one how to pinch the bottom of the carton in a particular way as they poured the fries to reduce the amount of available space in the carton and give the false impression that the carton was positively overflowing with fries when in fact it was only about half full. Ah, a trick you learned from the Walker's company who make crisps. Crisps are the biggest thing. It's like you buy a bag of crisps. It's like, why is it only a third of it crisps? What the f***? This has bothered me since childhood. I think genuinely great business place products, you know, because we already got beard oil, we've got the rotting turtle. What we need is like crisp bags that are actually fucking full. I'm gonna go pitch that on Dragon's Den. Peter, Deborah, what is my revolutionary idea? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell crisps and we're actually gonna fill up the fucking bag. And they'll be like, brilliant idea, Simon. I'm going to invest. Do you have a patent on that? And I'll be like, it's unpatentable. Do you have any sales? No sales. Do you have a business plan? I'm gonna see myself out. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Peter. It's been real. Honestly, though, in Dragon's Den, how do you go there without, like, I remember there was one person who didn't know, like, what the profit figures were on, like, all these units they sold. And it's like, my dude, why are you doing it? What? Have you, did you not watch an episode of Dragon's Den? Uh, is, which is Shark Tank, just in case you didn't know. Uh, did you not watch a single episode in preparation for your appearance on this nationally televised show? No? 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 You f***ing idiot. And you know that's what Peter Jones wants to say. He's all like, yeah, I have to say, uh, this has been a very interesting, oh, sorry, he's very tall. He's very, you know, he's like, he's a, he's, he, I, I'd be scared of Peter Jones. Like, I'd go in there, I'd be like, please don't hurt me. <laughs> Ah, with your words. I'd be like, yeah, I'm really disappointed. I think this uh, product is going to be very good. Uh, for that reason, I'm out. Uh, in his mind, he's like, you just know. You can see it in his face. He's like, there's that great slowed down clip of him being disgusted where he's like, the pinch was a subtle maneuver, which would not usually have been spotted by the untrained and hungry eye. Although the Reddit user did reveal that she got called out for it once when a suspicious customer tipped his fries into a paper bag and then poured them straight back into the carton to demonstrate how sad and how empty, half empty it now looked. The story prompted many other Reddit users and ex-employees to come forward with their own alleged experiences of being ordered to perform the pinching trick. Holy sh! It's just fries, guys. Is that really an ex- are you really cutting corners on the fries? I mean, the expense is more like the labor and the building and the running costs. It's not the actual cost of the fries, right? I mean, they're basically free, right? You go to a store and buy a giant bag of fries and it's like two pounds or whatever, like three dollars. They're basically free. How have McDonald's strongly denied the allegations in a statement to the Washington Post? Wow, we were just saying that the Washington Post was focused on real journalism. And here we are. <laughs> Apparently not, allegedly. Which read, We believe these claims to be fictional. There are no secret tricks, and we have strict operational procedures in place to ensure that fry portions are not underfilled. I suppose it's possible that the trick could have been carried out in just a few isolated locations, rather than rolled out as an official company policy. But it would likely be a truly low blow if there were any truth to the allegations, considering that fries are literally as cheap as chips to produce thank you danny it seems an odd portion of the menu from which to try and pinch a few extra grubby dollars fully agree dodgy discount coupons a greedy promotional scam from a greedy i absolutely I, they're all in apps now I have, I have the mcdonald's app i have the kfc app i don't have the bk app but i will get it Burger King recently opens near my apartment. Very excited. and by recently i mean it was at least 18 months ago but i feel like covid has just made time be like whoosh, really small that might be a bit harsh on Kalita Anderson from Maryland, though. We don't Nessa, we don't know the exact circumstances, Simon. It's not a difficult word. Let's carry on. That led her to wander into her local branch of Burger King one day in 2017 and order not one, not two, but three croissant sandwiches. That sounds horrible. For all I know, she might have eaten it in days. I've never tried one of these before, but I understand the international variants can be very different as they tend to cater to local breakfast preferences. But in the US, at least, a croissant which usually consists of a sausage patty with bacon, eggs, and cheese stuffed inside a croissant. I never understood this. It's way... Is it... Is it Italian or something like that? Like, the, the croissants with, like, savory inside? I'm like, that is disgusting. A croissant is a sweet, buttery pastry that goes with sweet stuff. Not with cheese, you f psychos. Judging by the photographs, I reckon that one of them would do me fine. But Kalita was ravenous, and she had got a coupon. Clutching the buy one get one free coupon in her hands, she ordered her first two sandwiches and was charged for one sandwich at the price of $3.19. She seemed quite happy with the deal and probably enjoyed her second sandwich even more than the first, knowing that it was entirely free. Well, it wasn't. 
actually, was it? It was half the price. Because, you know, that's how economics works. But after scoffing them both, Kalita still felt quite a big package. She didn't have any more coupons, but she figured that she'd just go buy one more and do without the freebie. Four croissant sandwiches might be a bit much anyway. She really loved these croissant sandwiches. To just order three straight, straight up, it's like, I love a Whopper. But I'm not gonna, I like, maybe I could eat two. But after two, I'm not gonna go order another Whopper. Especially if I'm not getting some extra deal. I'm gonna order like a chicken sandwich or something. Something different, depending on how hungry I am. But this time she noticed something peculiar. She was only charged 2.16 for a single sandwich. This could have just been a one-off error, but Kalita wasn't prepared to let this lie. She put on her detective hat and began scouting around other branches of Burger King in a write-up for the Washington Post. <laughs> Not really, I made that last bit up. Armed with <laughs> hilarious, Simon, well done. You comedy genius! Armed with fistfuls more, buy one get one free coupons. She later even hired a lawyer to conduct more investigative work on her behalf. Oh my god, you have too much money. And although the exact prices varied from branch to branch, the outcomes were broadly the same. Whenever a customer tried to use a coupon, the price of a single croissant which was mysteriously and quite dramatically inflated. In one particular branch, it was alleged that a single sandwich usually cost just $1, but it was jacked up to $4 whenever a coupon was used. So you could buy four separate sandwiches for $4 or just get half as much with a buy one, get one free coupon. This is so confusing. But why would you do it like this? This is surely isn't how discount coupons are meant to work. It meant that Burger King was giving the impression of running a generous offer rooted in goodwill, when in fact they were barely giving anything away. Whoops, a Daisy I knocked over a magic spoon packet. When they were barely giving everything aw anything away at all. Well, it just sounds like they're not cheating you. It's just like that's how they had to do it in their uh, what are they called, like point of sale systems in the checkout. You know where the boop, 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 boop. They, that's probably just how the technology works. I don't think they're ripping anyone off. Kalita Anderson filed a lawsuit against the chain. What for? What have you lost? who never admitted any wrongdoing at all, but they did reach a settlement in which Burger King offered $2 and $5 gift cards to anyone who had paid over the odds for a single croissant sandwich when using a discount coupon. The strangest thing about this promo is that the promotional coupons have been running for two years without any customers spotting the problem. Yeah, this is the most ridiculous lawsuit I've ever heard of. And it may have, and I've talked, we've talked about some ridiculous lawsuits here before. And it may never have been brought to light at all if Kalita Anderson had fancied going back for thirds on that fateful day. Pricey foam. Not every lawsuit filed against a fast food restaurant scores a minor victory for the consumer, though. Starbucks managed to get a lawsuit against them dismissed when they successfully argued that a customer doesn't necessarily expect a 16-ounce latte to contain 16 ounces of liquid. Nah, because there's going to be foam and stuff, right? I'll have a Trenta no foam five-shot half-cap no foam pumpkin spice latte with no foam at 210 degrees. First of all, that's really hot. It's like if you get a latte it's like or a cappuccino or whatever, there's going to be some foam. That's okay, it's like, as long as it reaches the line. It's not like a beer or something. The traditional latte is created by mixing espresso with steamed milk and then topping off the con concoction with a thin layer of milk foam. But the killer question was, how much foam could a customer expect to find at the top and how much natural liquid should they be able to drink underneath it? In 2016, a lawsuit was filed by a couple of disgruntled coffee drinkers from California and a third plaintiff in New York who reckoned that a typical latte served by Starbucks contained around 25% less coffee than it should. I'm sorry, does your job description entail arguing with your customers, thereby delaying the moment at which they receive the irresistible nutmeggy sweetness of the extra hot no foam pumpkin spice latte they've been thinking about all day i mean god guys for f sake what i want i want to talk to these people i want to know what their lives are like who are these people filing these lawsuits because i mean it's just ridiculous the lawsuit claimed that the recipe and method used by Starbucks since 2009 had been shortchanging customers for years while saving the company millions of dollars. The plaintiffs argued that to fill to the filthy lines of every heating pitcher were purposefully etched uh, far too low to ensure that the top quarter of every cup was left empty and could be topped off with cheap foam. The difference between the cost of foam and the cost of milk is f***ing negligible. You can look up any one of those diagrams which talks about, you know, there's, they, they often do it, there's a picture of a Starbucks mug and then they have all of the costs associated with it. It's obviously like locations, staff, management, all of it, I guess that's staff, but all of that stuff. And then at the bottom in the tiniest bit, it's like actual cost of coffee, actual cost of milk, nothing. Doesn't make any sense. I th This got dismissed, Danny told us at the beginning, Spoiler alert, um, good. And it was a claim that generated interest and support from some sections of the media, who are dumb, allegedly. During a section of the Today Show, Jeff Rosen conducted his own re- Rosen? Rosen? I don't know, doesn't Rosen have one S? No one cares. Uh, except all the people in the comments who are like, ah, <laughs> Jeff Rosen, Simon. Jeff Rosen, it's Jeff Rosen. Ah. 
He conducted his own research into six different branches of Starbucks scattered around New York in a bit to find out exactly how many fluid ounces of coffee you were really getting for your money. Uh, and he concluded that none of the 16 ounce lattes that he purchased contained anything close to the advertised amount of liquid. In one case, he found a cup to contain less than 12 ounces of liquid after the big dollop of foam had settled. Outrageous! However, US District Judge, Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers concluded in early 2018 that Starbucks measuring system was completely acceptable. Based on the similar reasoning that a customer is likely to expect to find ice in an iced drink, the judge declared that a customer is likely to expect in a latte, fo expect foam in a latte, as this was essentially a, comp as this was an essential component of the beverage. Yes, Yvonne is, can you imagine being the judge in that case and be like, get the f out. What am I doing with my time? This is disgusting. There's actual crimes. There's actual real crimes that we have to deal with. You f***ing idiots. Not everyone is happy with the judge's conclusion, though. Idiots. And I'm not sure it's tackled the heart of the problem. It's fine to say that foam is an expected ingredient of latte, but is it reasonable for it to take up a whole quarter of the container? And could it, in theory, be allowed to take up even more? If you don't like it, go to f***ing Costa. Or wherever. Or make your own latte at home. It's your choice. No one's forcing you to drink the Starbucks lattes, are they? It's literally the biggest first world problem I've ever heard in my life. Thank you, coffee donkey. Uh, some bartenders are happy to top up your pint of beer after the frothy head has settled down a bit, and so maybe Starbucks should offer a similar approach. Or maybe just make this cup slightly bigger. Or maybe just be happy that they were the f***ing lawsuit you can get on with their lives, and let everyone who likes Starbucks continue to go into Starbucks, and everyone who's upset by this not go to Starbucks anymore. Guess where they're gonna go? To Starbucks. Let's move on from this train wreck piece of sh Terrible value meals. It's a crushing disappointment when you discover that even the extra value meal option is a stinking lie and a surprisingly common one. One notable example emerged from Chicago when Kelly Colleen stepped into a local branch of McDonald's one morning in 2016 and was drawn towards a big promotion for the sausage burrito breakfast meal on the extra value menu. Two sausage burritos, hash browns, and a cup of coffee for just $5.08 when you took advantage of the super combo deal. It's always weird how McDonald's is like $5.08 in America because it's like, yeah, it's like $4.49 or whatever, or $4.50 or $3.99, and then it's like, yeah, tax. Just put the final price on the menu, America. It's not that hard, is it? Why do we have to be doing maths in our head? It's like, oh, yeah, don't forget the sales tax. And it's like, which also varies from state to state. What the f America? Every time I go there, it's super confusing. Makes me sad. I've got a small brain not designed for big boy maths. It was only when she sat down and tucked into her bargain breakfast that her attention wandered back towards the menu and she noticed something very odd. After a few quick calculations, she realized that three components of her extra value meal would only have come to 497 if she had been rung up individually on the till. And as soon as Kelly came to this conclusion, she did what any right-minded citizen of Chicago would have done in her place. She filed a lawsuit against McDonald's on the grounds that the chain was cheating their customers with so-called large extra so-called extra value meals, which were more expensive to buy than if you just purchased the components separately. I remember this. It used to before like inflation ruined it, there used to be like the pound menu in McDonald's. And you could buy, you know, Big Mac was on the pound menu, large Coke was on the pound menu, fries was on the pound menu large fries and so for three pounds you could get what was essentially an extra value meal but the extra value meal was more expensive again i'm like this isn't lawsuit worthy this is just like look at the menu look at the options and make choices as an informed consumer if you rush in there and you're like yeah i get the extra value meal more fool you to be honest by the way caveat emptor come on they're not being a dick just just look at the f***ing menu could you like get less stuff just get it <laughs> If they were like, if they were lying to you, they're saying like, yeah, yeah, it's cheaper to get the extra value meal. Although they do call it extra value, don't they? But that's not saying explicitly it's cheaper. I'm sorry, I'm with McDonald's on this one. They believe that Simon, you're siding with the billionaire big corporation. That, what a surprise, you capitalist pig. It's like, I don't know, just, it's not that hard, is it, people? Come on. It's just not worthy of a lawsuit, is essentially what I'm saying. It's not the first time something like this has happened. There's a long list of examples of fast food restaurants charging extra for their extra value meals and combos. However, they're usually not breaking any laws. In this case, Judge Elaine Bucklow flipped the lawsuit out of court as she didn't believe that it violated the Illinois Consumer Fraud and Deceptive Business Practices Act, as Kelly's lawsuit has claimed. The judge declared that there was nothing misleading about the practices. The prices were all clearly visible on the menu. I'd be a great judge. Mm. Mwah. And customers were provided with all the information to make their own price by price comparison. So, in other words, it's your responsibility to do the maths. $50,000. Plus. 
Hey, post note. Maybe it's not worth kicking up a fuss for the sake of about nine cents. It seems a bit shitty to me, though. Yeah, it is a bit shitty. I wouldn't even say shitty. it's a little bit shady. It's not even big time shady. As many customers would instinctively assume that an extra value meal contained extra value for the consumer rather than for the business. The lesson to be learned here seems to be that you should never blindly trust a fast food restaurant menu when it appears to be trying to save you money. What? What's that? You should never blindly trust a giant, giant corporation? I mean, who would have ever thought of that? Take a calculator with, like, with, with you next time you order a fancy big breakfast. Heavy sausage. It was weigh-in day at Porky's Slimming Club, and Big Graham was feeling particularly confident this week. He was feeling like Small Graham, or slightly less Big Graham. He may have put on weight for the last 32 weeks in a row, but this time he knew it was going to be different when he threw himself upon the mercy of the communal weighing scales. Big Graham had been rather sensibly eating healthy, low-calorie options down at Chipotle Mexican Grill every day over the last week. I'll admit that I've never really heard of the American chain, more commonly known as just Chipotle, although there are 11 branches in the UK, and they all appear to be in London. I've definitely heard of Chipotle. Like, I listen to podcasts with Americans, and Chipotle is quite popular. People like Chipotle. I've never been there, I don't know what it's like, I assume it serves some fake version of Mexican food. Oh my god, I love Chipotle! Chipotle is my life! But the chain stars itself as a slightly healthier alternative to mainstream fast food because they prefer fresh ingredients over flash frozen sh**. Big Graham will be going down for the Carrizo Burrito every lunchtime. The menu board had shown a tantalizing picture of the deliciously seasoned and perfectly grilled spicy chicken and pork sausage in a burrito, which was brimming over with white rice, black beans, tomato salsa, cheese, and all kinds of sh**, and all for just $7.15. I don't know, it feels quite expensive. Weren't we just talking about McDonald's breakfast was like, with all the sh**, was like $5? Okay. It's like, uh, a dollar or something? I mean, uh, $2. <laughs> cool. More importantly, and also $7.15. It's probably $6.99 before tax or whatever that is, isn't it? Off. More importantly, Graham had been persuaded by the words 300 calories in big, reassuring letters at the bottom of the image, which gave him the confidence to pick out on the stuff every day without feeling the slightest trace of guilt. So it was a massive blow to step on those scales at the end of the week, only to discover that it put on an absolute f ton of weight and now faced a lifetime ban from Porky Slimming Club on the grounds that he was just blatantly taking the piss. That this doesn't sound like the best at Slimming Club, does it? It's like, no, 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 you put on too much weight, so we uh, banned you. We got stats to worry about, people. That probably explains why I'd been feeling so stuffed all week and had barely been able to move. <laughs> Here's the thing about the image on the menu. Although this isn't made clear anywhere on the image at all, not even in the small print which can be read with a magnifying glass, the word 300 calorie only refers to the Carrizo. If you take into account all the other trimmings served with the Carrizo burrito, is it Carrizo? It's Chorizo or Chorizo or I don't know, whatever. I'm just saying it my way. My way's best. And in fact, look, and you can make a consumer decision. If you don't like it, don't watch. It's okay. Click off right now. I don't care. No, I do care. I love you. Thank you for watching. Unless you're a dick, then you can leave. If you take all of the other trimmings into account with the Carrizo Burrito, and in fact if you use Chipotle's very own online nutrition calculator to do this, you find that the meal is packing 1,055 calories in total. <laughs> Three times as much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry about this, I still have the broken collarbone with the metal inside it. I'm not sure in which order these episodes will air, but I broke my collarbone mountain biking. It's a little bit painful and achy, so I just gotta be a little bit more careful. Standing up for a while, it's like, uh, uh, uh. But now I'm a cyborg, woo! Now it could be argued that any old fool should be able to realize how blindingly obvious it is, obvious it is that such a heavy meal is, meal is going to contain more than 300 calories, no matter what it says on the sign. I'm not so sure, they don't really tend to think about how many calories should or shouldn't be in a meal. Yeah, generally if it says 300 calories, I'll be inclined to believe it. Especially if you look in the small prints and it's like, yeah, 300 calories. No mention of sausage. If the signage is clearly displaying to me the words 300 calories underneath an image of a meal, I'm probably going to assume that it's referring to the whole picture of meal rather than just one specified ingredient. A trio of weight-conscious plaintiffs from Los Angeles agree with me. After feeling excessively full from stuffing their faces with, for faces with Carrizo burritos, they realize they have been misled and launched a class action lawsuit against Chipotle, which contends that the chain is encouraging repeat patronage by lulling customers into a false belief based on false nutritional information. I made fun of the other lawsuits. This one I'm kind of in into. This is like fuck shady as shit, and you're messing with people's health. You should be forced to change that. No one should be given any money. No one should be getting sued. But there should just be a thing which says, yo, uh, Chipotle, you have to change it. All right? Get on it now. 
and maybe apologize. Five years on from the filing of the lawsuit, all has gone quiet on this front. It's not clear if the lawsuit just fizzled out or if the attorneys are still figuring out how they how they intend to try and how much they int <laughs> or if the attorneys are still figuring out how much money they intend to make from all of this. But it certainly feels to me as if Chipotle's would have a hard time trying to argue that the signage wasn't purposefully misleading. It's a bit of a disappointing ending, isn't it? We didn't really find out anything, and it's been five years, so sorry. <laughs> You don't really want to be trusting those menu descriptions or signage prices or discount coupons or fries, potatoes or coffee cup sizes, oh my god. You'd be better off taking my original advice and just keep on walking right past the fast food restaurants. There might be a nice bakery or a casino at the far end of the strip. That was a callback to another video. Thank you, Danny, for putting this together. Sam, you did a beautiful job with the memes, even though I've not seen them, but I trust you. And, uh, well, that's it. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring. There's a link to them below. And thank you for watching. I need to sit down. It's the circle!